So this is going to be something a bit different. Um, I thought I'd take a break from messing around with hot ends and designing them and so forth and actually make something for a change. Um, so I just messed around on the internet and um, came across something that piqued my interest. It's called a hydroponics tower. I um, don't know anything about hydroponics other than it's um, a soil-less based way of growing plants. Anyway, after watching a few YouTube videos, I um, came across these things called hydroponics towers, or sometimes aeroponics towers. And basically it's a, it's a kind of a reservoir, and you have a hollow tower, and you fill the reservoir with nutrients, well, basically water with nutrients dissolved in it. And then you pump the nutrients up to the top of the tower through a tube in the middle. And then, uh, and then it spreads outwards and trickles down the inside face. And then uh, plants themselves go into kind of mesh cups in the side of the tower. And then as the nutrients trickle down, they feed the roots. Um, the reason some people call it aeroponics is that apparently um, roots also, plant roots also absorb oxygen as well as nutrients. And if you keep them permanently immersed in water, uh, then the plants will die. So they need to dry out periodically. And um, these towers that I came across, apparently they run the pump for a period of time and then turn the pump off for a period of time so that the plants can absorb the oxygen but obviously turn the pump back on before they dry out too much. So anyway, I looked a bit further and there's all sorts of designs on the internet and uh, one was a 3D printable version and it's actually on Thingiverse. But there are a few things that bothered me a little bit about that design and I just decided to make my own. So um, it's a kind of a modular approach like the one on Thingiverse um, but with a few tweaks and mods um, to suit my personal preferences, shall we say. Um, I thought it would be an interesting project because it kind of brings together uh, three of my hobbies because I quite like pottering about gardening and growing things, um, especially the price of food being what it, what it is, um, and 3D printing and home automation. So the plan is to um, print the tower or as much of it as I can and then um, add some sensors and a little ESP controller um, which will turn the pump on and off and measure other parameters and uh, adjust things but I'll talk about the control side in a, in a separate video um, so for now I'll just talk about the, the, the tower that I've made and uh, got most of the bits made for it now so um, uh, here are some pictures so I started with a a tank which is basically just a plastic container I think they probably use these things for recycling bins or something and I thought it'd be useful because I think you have to drain the nutrients periodically or or whatever I'm certainly going to need to drain it at the end of the season so fitted a drain plug into it and then I designed all the bits as I say and, and printed them um, this is uh, in this is the base that goes in the tank and then the rest of the tower stacks on top of that I used um, PETG because it's got to stand up to the elements outside um, and this is actually recycled PETG that I got from 3D filler print but it prints very well it's, it's nice filament so that um, sits in the bottom of the tank like that just stands there and then here is the first of many. This is just a, a straight extension piece of about 100 mil, something like that. So you see there's a, a washer shaped bit in the bottom, um, which is to take the tubes that will run up through the whole tower from the pump. So that's just um, kind of fixed in place with four little legs. And there it is from the side. So basically the um, section at the bottom is thinner, uh, is narrower, so these things will just stack one, up, one upon the other. Then because the, the coolant, uh, the nutrient solution is going to run back down, there's a good chance it might pick up some debris or something, lumps of root from the plants or something like that. So um, I made this strainer, which is basically two, uh, two rings like that. You can see the white plastic bits there, there's two of those. And then I bought some um, stainless steel fine mesh and sandwiched it in between and then cut it out so that I've uh, basically got a filter. 
a coarse filter. That sits in the first extension piece like that, it just presses in. And so that's what that looks like in the tank. The first bit in place. Um, so then I took the lid and chopped it in half because this first bit is going to be kind of fixed because the tower is going to come up through it so it's not going to be easy to take off. Um, so I chopped it in half and cut a hole in it. Now the lid itself was bowed and I was a bit concerned I'll get a puddle of water on the top because there's a lip around the, around the top. Um, and if it so if it rains that's going to form a puddle which is going to trickle down inside and it will dilute the nutrients and stuff so I want to kind of prevent that happening as much as possible so I basically took a strip of aluminium and drilled some holes in it and bolted it to the lid so that it doesn't sag and then I also thought it'd be quite nice to uh, measure how much uh, nutrient is in the tank I could have just put a sight glass on the side, but it would be nice to be able to um, do it from Home Assistant, I can, or I can look at that on my phone um, any time. So this is basically just a level switch that I use on RVs and so forth. Um, so it's um, it varies in resistance from 0 to 190 ohms, so 0 is where it is there at the bottom and 190 ohms will be at the top. It actually moves in stages. I think there's a series of reed switches inside that switch various resistors or something. Um, so it's not a uh, not a continuously variable resistance, but it does vary in steps um, depending on the height of this float at the bottom. And then I bought a pump, um, but I I needed um, it's going to be about two meters tall this this thing, so I need at least two meters head with a bit spare. Um, and now now these things can be generally optimistically rated. Um, I went for this one and it's got a three metre head. So then that shows the um, the base of the tower on the first section and the pump as it is installed. It's a submersible pump so it'll just sit in the bottom of the tank like that. And then with half of the lid on it looks like that. So these uh, you'll see what these little white clips are for um, a bit later. Um, cut a little slot in the tank to take the wire from the pump so it comes out. So basically that's um, a close-up of the clip. It's just a plastic block, um, a furniture block I suppose. Um, use a stainless steel bolt and bolted it to the to one part of the lid. Um, and then it, I can just twiddle it round and it will clip on the second part of the lid because the second part of the lid was also bowed so when it butted up against that aluminium bar then the two sides were sticking upwards so um, this just kind of holds it down simple and cheap so I'm still going to have this puddle um, because of the lip so I drilled some holes around the edge because the the lip is kind of goes either side of the base then um, it's hollow that lip so if I just drilled a hole then the, the, any rainwater would just fall down the hole and still go into the tank so I drilled these holes and fitted tubes to get around the fact that it's um, hollow inside so any rainwater that collects on the top will run through those little holes out of those tubes and down to the ground rather than getting into the nutrient and diluting it too much would have been better and easier if I could have found a box with a flat top but never mind. Uh, so then I started um, making the actual bits for the towel themselves so they all just stack one above the other. Um, so I've got various designs I've got three way, four way, five way and mostly two inch but some three inch ones so this is a, a three inch it takes a three inch um, diameter mesh pot so that when I see on, on the tower it looks like that and that's the you can see there the tube that will go up through the middle of all of these towers from the pump I bought some um, silicon tube quite thick wool um, but it's a lot more flexible than garden hose and it won't kink and then it occurred to me that um, not all of the uh, 
not all of the holes will be filled all of the time. Well, hopefully that will be the plan, but there will be occasions where some of the holes haven't got plants in it. So I made some uh, caps to cap off the holes um, just to stop nutrient evaporation and contamination or anything like that. So there's a, a three inch one and then that's how it fits. It just it just presses on. Well, it's a hardly a press fit. It just sits on top like that. Blocks the hole off for when there isn't a plant in there. Uh, so this is a uh, this is a two inch one. This is a four way two inch one. Which you go on top like that. So you can see how it starts to build up. So there's quite a few more. Um, each of those takes about eight hours to print. Then I also made these rings that um, will just fit over the top with lugs on. Um, the plan being that um, if this thing's quite tall, when it's standing outside, if it gets windy, uh, the wind could just blow it over. So my plan is to um, attach some strings or something or other to these lugs and then use like guy ropes and tie it down to the tank or to my deck or something just to stop it blowing over or maybe they might be useful for um, for uh, some sort of plant support some put some strings that plants that uh, plants could grow up things like cucumbers or tomatoes might need a bit of support so so that's how that fits over the top it just sits there basically and this is one of the um, two inch mesh pots that I'll be using um, I didn't bother printing these they're so cheap to buy I just bought a load and that's how they fit inside the the recess in the tower and then they penetrate inside the, you can't really see from that angle but they do penetrate a fair way inside the tower itself so the water will one run down that inside edge and um, supply the nutrients and moisture to the plant itself so this is pretty much full height um, it's about oh there's one or two more to go on the top of there and it'll be as tall as me um, so I don't want to be getting on a ladder or a step or anything to harvest anything that's on the top so then um, top cap is, uh, is starts with this bit um, that will go on the last um, the last pot holder thingy and then there's this bit which is actually upside down so the the tube from the pump will fit on that spigot that you can see sticking up and then um, it just sits inside but those little the four little spacers um, will mean there's only like about a three mil edge all the way around so the water will come up through the middle and then it will spill out over the top of this plate and trickle down the gaps in the edges which should keep it um, running down the side of the tower and not just going down the middle of it and missing the plant roots so when it's in the top cap it looks like this and then there's the uh, there's the top cap itself uh, it's got a little slot in the side because there's a sensor uh, I'm going to fit inside I'm going to fit a moisture sensor inside so if the pump um, doesn't run for some reason the moisture sensor will dry out and it will give me a warning so I can fix fix the problem before all the plants die you know, in theory or hopefully so the flat bit in the middle so the the theory is that the this is upside down so the water will hit that and spread out sideways so that's the complete assembly and there it is sat on the top I'm rather hoping that uh, the, the pump is adjustable flow so it won't have so much pressure that it's going to blow the top off it'll just uh, <laughs> At least I hope not. <laughs> and then finally, um, I made these um, hooks, which will fit over the edge of the bin like that. And then the theory is I can tie guy ropes to these, and then up to the um, support rings on the tower itself to um, keep it rigid and stop it blowing over in the wind. So that's the theory, anyway. Um, God knows whether this will work or not. I don't know anything about hydroponics, but I'm learning. Um, so that's as far as I've got so far, apart from I've done the control system as well. 
from what limited research I've done, they tend to run the pump for sort of 15 minutes and then turn it off for 15 minutes and run it off. And that seems to be based on using mechanical timers. So given it's a 60 watt pump um, and given the price of energy being what it is these days, I don't I want it to run it at the minimum amount of time really. Um, so I thought if I use like an ESP32 chip controlling a relay, um, then I could run the pump um, for say two minutes and 13 minutes off or whatever else. I, I need to play with that and see what works. Um, but it will give me a lot more granular control than being stuck with 15 minute intervals. Um, anyway, I'm, I'll do another video on, on the controller side of it. So uh, that's it for now and thanks for watching and um, see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.